going to bite-sized bite riffs, let's build an army video. So in this series, what I'm going to do is show you how I go about building armies and putting together forces, and I'm going to kick it off with By Fire and Sword, where I'll take my skirmish force and turn it into a division. If you've seen my other videos, then you have seen this Swedish skirmish force before. And the nice thing about what I have now is that it's basically a really uh, solidly sized right here regiment with full command as well as uh, regular right here's and some armored right here's. And then I also have a couple of dragoons and a cannon. Uh, this is a very nice start to a division, but it's of course uh, just the first part of it. So we need to expand it, get some more guys in the field. So I wanted to build a division for the Kingdom of Sweden. And I chose the field division because I kind of like their mix of cavalry and infantry. Uh, so it's not as infantry heavy as the garrison and it's not just cavalry like the cavalry division. Um, so the field division is, is where, it, where it's at. And looking at their composition, you have to get two regiments of raiders. So there's one regiment that's taken care of. Then in the, in the middle, you have a choice of raiders Dragoons or infantry, and then you get a choice of some additional regiments, maybe take some allies, and of course, all of the added additional units. And when putting together armies, what I always like to do is start with the uh, what I call the aspirational uh, build. So this is the division that I would like to play with eventually. Um, I'm basically shooting for it, and so my aspirational division starts with a big national raider veteran regiment, and obviously I can field it as regular uh, Raiders as well, uh, preferably with lots of armor, and this is kind of the main punching force of this army. So lots of Raiders, veterans, really good quality, and they'll be able to cause some serious damage. Then in the middle, I really wanted to put down some infantry because I like the look and feel of the uh, pike and shot formations, and I really wanted to bring that to the table. And I decided to go with mercenaries instead of national infantry because the mercenaries can be fielded as veterans as well. So this kind of gives me that flexibility of either putting together something that has more bases at a lower quality of the regular infantry or fewer bases, higher quality veterans. And so for this build, um, I really like the idea of these grizzled, experienced veterans that uh, really know what they're doing and can take on some charges and put down some pretty impressive fire and I also like to give them one uh, one cannon or one gun then on the right side I would bring in the second writer uh, regiment and again I'm choosing mercenaries for the flexibility so with the national raiders only one of the regiments can have armor whereas if you field mercenaries you can have another regiment with armor and while in the, my initial build I don't think I would actually want to have uh, all of the armored raiders, I want to have the option. And so that's that's the base of the division. And then to support it, I'm giving them a regiment of dragoons. And that's because I really like and practice how the dragoons play out where they can push up ahead, dismount, take over some forward objectives like buildings or, or forests. And so with my two punchy raider regiments being able to attack and my infantry regiment basically standing still and, and holding the center. The Dragoons have the flexibility to go to the left, right, and push up, seize some objectives, and um, cause problems for the enemy. As well as, they give me the option of being reasonable scouts, so if, if I need to, I could send them out scouting. For the Allies, I decided to go with the Polish Light Cavalry Regiment because one of the biggest challenges I found when playing as the Swedes on the skirmish level is that they're cavalry, while really hard-hitting and, and, and very good, has a, tr a hard time keeping up with the light cavalry um, units as well as elite cavalry units. Those, those formations tend to be able to dance around the table and really take advantage of their mobility and get around the flanks and just generally be difficult to deal with. So even though the allied Polish regiment suffers some morale penalties as the uh, those the, the soldiers weren't typically too keen on fighting for the Swedes. The fact that it's all elite and light cavalry gives it a lot of flexibility, and so I can send it scouting if I need to, and this way protect my dragoons from scouting losses, reconnaissance losses. 
as well as I can use this regimen to push ahead, maybe even divide it into lots of little groups and just skirmish around and, and, and annoy my opponent. And when it inev inevitably breaks due to losses, that's fine because uh, at that point I I would think that they would have served their, their purpose. And then for support, um, I went uh, fairly light with three additional light guns, a medium gun just because I love the idea of, of cannons and and artillery fire, and one ammunition wagon. And again, this is based on my experience. The Swedish guns are, are really excellent with uh, a skill of five and two shots per turn. They can do serious damage, but with two shots per turn, they're out of ammunition after three turns. And on a, in a division game, which is anywhere from eight to 10 turns, uh, that's not a lot of fire. So I feel that if you're bringing an artillery battery, you really want to have an ammunition wagon or your artillery will essentially be standing uh, still not firing for most of the game. So this aspirational field division comes in at 42 points, which is a very respectable size. It's not a large division in the 50s or 60s. It's not tiny in the 30s. So uh, I feel that it kind of fits in a nice mid range, um, has some flexibility, some punching power, some staying power, and generally should be kind of fun to play. Obviously, it's all theory, but that's that's how I'm approaching it. There's only one trouble with this division for me right now, and that's if I look at the figs that I have, my skirmish force uh, in green, there's a lot of unpainted. And for me, where I'm a gamer first, painter, uh, collector second, this is a problem because I, I really don't get inspired to paint for hours and hours and hours before I can field anything. And so uh, that's one of the reasons I was uh, resisting going for a division because I, I have this feeling that if I try to go for a division, I'll just not finish the, the painting before I can field something and, and actually have fun with it and get inspired to, to keep painting. So now with the, with the, the Daily Supplement, I, I took a second look at it and decided to go the other way and think, okay, so, so this is what I want to field, but what's the smallest possible division? So never mind playability or, or how well it games, what's the smallest division I can legally field and satisfy all of the kind of uh, building requirements. So we have a base, uh, three regiments, no allies, no supporting regiments, and at their smallest level, a national ra uh, veterans, mercenary veterans, infantry and mercenary raider veterans, That's that, those are all the figs you need. And as you can see with the green, I actually have most of this painted, so all I'm missing is uh, eight infantry stands, which is really fast to paint, so this is not a problem. I can get this done really quickly and get it on the table, but at 17 points, really, this division is kind of a big, big skirmish force, and it's not even that big of a skirmish force, and I just don't think this would be fun to play at all. And uh, to arrange a division game, get your friend out there, set up the train, set up the, the forces, and have put down this division, and have it routed in the first or <laughs> game turn or two as the ra uh, regiments all fail their... their uh, losses checks and, and uh, get broken, it, it almost feels like it's not worth it. So while this is a legal division, and yes, you know, you could get something out of it, I just don't think it's worth fielding and worth uh, going for. So knowing that this is, okay, so that's that's the smallest possible. I know it's the aspirational, I know it's the smallest. So what I came up with is something I call the smallest viable division. And this is something that is still as small as I can make it, but it's big enough to be able to give me uh, some options on the table, and, and it'd be kind of fun to play. So um, I went with just the base regiments again, no allies, no no secondary reg regiments. Uh, the National Rate of Veterans stay as they are, because I do want that punching power. I want one regiment that can stay on the table, take some losses, and, and not flee right away as well as give out some losses. The Mercenary Infantry gets a couple more bases to the smallest possible, so now I have a solid pike block, a couple of uh, musketeer squadrons, so I can actually stand, take a charge, put down some fire salvos and, and do some damage. And the Mercenary Raiders, again, it's it's a small regiment, but seven bases, it's uh, uh, two small squadrons, uh, which can uh, do some damage or protect the flank or, or do something useful. Uh, no reconnaissance, reconnaissance capability in this division, so I probably would just take recon losses. Um, and then for support, Remove one gun, so get two light guns, one medium, keep the armor, uh, ammunition wagon, and then field my Dragoons as additions to the uh, to the force. Uh, this way I can still get to use them and I still have something that can get in the building. 
maybe attach the Dragoons to the Mercenary Eaters, so this way that regiment has a bit more flexibility, a bit more movement options, and, um, and I can actually move this around the table. So suddenly looking at this, it feels like this is achievable again. Uh, uh, my aspirational division is much bigger, lots more painting uh, that I will get to eventually, but I want to get this on the table quickly, get some games in, and uh, get some experience in, in what is actually working so that I can uh, direct my painting and, and, and collecting so that it uh, reflects what, what I enjoy playing and, and how it actually works in, in practice. So uh, the blue is what needs to be painted, which is actually not that bad at all. And the paint order that I want, I want to tackle this in is start with the infantry because I haven't done much infantry and really enjoy painting them so I can get that out of the way quickly. Uh, first half of the extra ray, ray terrace, do all the guns, which is really fast, and the uh, and the ammunition wagon, and then to finish up with the rest of the raiders, and I should be good to go. And so this division should actually not take too long to put together to expand my existing skirmish force, and we'll see it on the table. So in the following videos, I'll uh, give you guys quick updates on f how it's going, and I'll show you the final division when it's ready. And of course, when I get some games going, I'll uh, put some battle reports from the division games and put them up as well. So thanks for watching as always, and see you next time on Bite Size Bite